Hi everyone, I'm Adam. I am Digital Marketing Manager at Sense. Um, if you don't know who Sense is, uh, we are a disability charity. We help um, people with complex disabilities um, and make sure no one's left out of life. Hi, I'm Jessie. Uh, I'm a Digital Strategy Manager at Forward Action. Um, so I lead one of our project teams and we are a digital mobilization agency. Um, and we are here today uh, because uh, Forward Action Partners uh, in 2023 did really amazing things, so including Sense, but lots of other kind of charities uh, and non-profits. Uh, and those things include recruiting uh, lots and lots of email supporters, 465,000, um, raising over 460,000 through our acquisition journeys, and raising 1.4 million through email. Um, and the reason we know that is because we obviously measure and kind of record everything. Um, and I'm super aware that this is kind of the first session of the day. Um, so don't worry, we're not going to kind of like hammer you with like a lot of data here. Um, we've got a few hopefully interesting bits of data to share, some storytelling, some learnings, um, and yeah, just kind of ideas uh, to get, um, I guess, brains working. I feel a little bit sleepy still. Um, and I know you've got a packed program um, of stuff and you want to kind of be uh, super on it. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah, we know that because we uh, record everything and measure everything and we have started to kind of pull that all together so that we have this kind of live uh, benchmark of all of our kind of like digital activity. Um, and we're mainly going to be focusing today on action pages. Um, so uh, I thought I'd start with a question for you. So this graph here uh, just shows the cost per lead by sector. So when we're uh, pushing uh, supporters uh, to an action page that asks them to sign up, uh, hopefully opt in uh, through paid social, uh, we've got all the different kind of sectors here, the average cost per lead, um, so from 43p down to £1.21, and this is for the whole of 2023. Um, so I thought we would start by just asking you to guess uh, which one you think is the very, very top bar, uh, so the best performing uh, of last year, best performing sector at 43p for uh, a new lead. Um, so we can just do hands, um, <laughs> there's no, you know, uh, there's no punishment if you get it wrong. Um, but who thinks it is at number one, UK poverty? Anybody? A few people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, number two, democracy and politics. Mm, that's the same amount. <laughs> and three, education. Less confident on that one. Okay. Um, hopefully this is going to work. Oh, no, it doesn't. Great. Okay. Um, <laughs> is it this one? No, it should say democracy and politics um, is what the slide transition should do. Um, but yeah, so democracy and politics. So um, yeah, as I said, we know that because we're kind of pulling all of this together uh, constantly and just making sure that we've got those benchmarks available. Um, and I've heard, I'm, I was going to say a bit of uh, slander against benchmarking. It's actually one talk that I went to where somebody uh, basically said, um, you know, why would you benchmark? You're just comparing yourself against average. Um, and I'm here to refute that. We're here to refute that. Um, because if you're looking at the right data, um, you won't be comparing yourself against average at all. Um, if you're looking at uh, data with a lot of kind of entries, if you're comparing against your peers in the, in the sector, um, whether that's, you know, similar kind of charities, organizations, or just generally, all you'll be doing is finding out where you're not kind of making the most of your potential. So where you're particularly kind of, yeah, when we talk about digital activity, action pages, emails, things like that, um, where there's a really, really easy way that you could make things work harder. Um, and that can be really, really useful, um, obviously, to make sure that you're having more impact, um, you're generating more actions, getting more income, um, but also to save your team time and money, which um, we all know is very, very important. Um, still in the cost of living crisis um, and we want to make sure that if we've got those kind of action pages and digital assets they are doing the best job without us kind of uh, even looking at them <clears throat> yeah and for us as an organization um, digital is quite a new thing for sense I would say um, we set up our first dedicated digital team in 2021 when I joined the organization and benchmarking really allowed us to get a sense of what good looked like, where we were aiming. Uh, we didn't have a wealth of data to rely on um, to look at our previous um, activity and see um, how we could optimize and, uh, and make things better. And it's really useful to have these benchmarks there to yeah, measure, measure yourself against um, and really know where you can improve. Uh, I think you need to point. <laughs> I don't <laughs> There we go. Oh, there we go. So it's with that in mind that um, we came to uh, Forward Action to work together with two, um, two questions, I guess. Could we grow our list of uh, engaged supporters so we could 
email them and ask them to do things and educate them about our cause. Um, and also sort of a more ambitious one to uh, recruit people in as regular donors uh, straight out of the gate um, and see whether we could do that and find a way to do that. Um, so, um, yeah, we, um, we came to Ford Action and we said, hand raises, question mark, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> yeah, um, so I think most people would probably be familiar with a hand raiser, even if you kind of call it um, something else at the moment, but um, it's a, a term for a sign up page, um, which essentially uh, uses like values as the kind of the hook, um, rather than something like a policy ask or a target that a petition would use. Um, so they can be really, really useful um, for kind of always on acquisition um, and just basically uh, recruiting supporters that um, rather than kind of uh, being very enthusiastic about one issue that you work on or actually just share the values of your organization um, and kind of have that sort of like a motive connection um, so some of the kind of sort of key features of a hand raiser would say are that that headline but as I said it's very sort of values based um, and yeah has those that kind of like a motive hook um, things like totalizer to add that sort of urgency and social proof so that uh, people really feel like they're joining um, a movement rather than just kind of saying, yeah, I think this issue should, I don't know, uh, be debated in parliament or something. Um, so yeah, they're kind of brought in more holistically, I guess we'd say. Um, and then also just that really, really, really simple low bar um, form that kind of autofills, it doesn't put anybody off, there's no barriers um, to basically turning that person who's been really kind of compelled, maybe if they saw an, an ad on, on uh, paid social, um, to make sure that they actually do become um, someone who's signed the hand raiser and also hopefully opted in. Um, so yeah, that's a few kind of uh, features um, of a hand raiser. <laughs> and now we wait. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, it is still me. Sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, so we developed these three hand raises uh, for um, sense uh, because we don't want to kind of assume what is going to be uh, the issue or the, the, the values uh, that really bring people in um, the most effectively. Um, and we put a small amount of spend on paid social across all three of these uh, just to basically uh, figure out uh, what the data was telling us about uh, which one had the most potential to recruit leads at a really, really low cost. Um, so the initial results were, we were really pleased with, uh, so all three hand raisers uh, came in sort of below 50p um, and we had the best performing uh, hand raiser which was that sort of cost of living framing on the far left, um, which yeah, disability and debt should not go in hand in hand, so why are costs soaring while benefits stay the same, um, add your name to demand change now. Um, and we had a hypothesis about why that one won. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think there's quite an obvious hypothesis in that the cost of living was everywhere. This was running last autumn, I, I think, um, and um, I, I personally was feeling the cost of living crisis. I think many people still are, um, and so I think that um, that real salience uh, meant that people, um, yeah, were really uh, inclined to to want to do something, take action, align themselves with an organisation that was also taking action on on that issue, um, and yeah, um, it came in and we recruited. Um, over two months, we recruited uh, over 8,000 uh, new subscribers um, at a cost of 99p per opt-in, which was great. It was great. Um, and yeah, we were able to, obviously, we were just kind of pleased with that result generally, but also um, it kind of benchmarked within uh, other kind of uh, health sector organizations, uh, since it was the kind of second best performing uh, recruitment uh, tool that we ran, recruit recruitment campaign that we ran um, in 2023. Um, so that was great. Um, we do know, though, that with a very kind of easy change of just the kind of the, the, the time of year and the budget weighting, um, that potentially that performance could have been even better. Um, so the chart you can see here um, is uh, cost per lead by month. Um, so that's across the whole of 2023. Um, and we have kind of started looking at this, uh, not because uh, there's kind of a difference in the cost per lead through like content and things like that, but actually because, uh, especially when you're doing recruitment using paid social, which is a great tool for recruitment, um, finding those people who, as I said, share your values um, and convincing them to join your organization. Um, you're relying on the, the, the paid social platforms to be able to serve those ads. Um, and what we found is that CPM, which, um, yeah, if you kind of don't know, is basically how expensive it is to serve an ad to somebody, um, really varies across the year. Some very obvious factors like Christmas and when is everybody trying to sell things um, to uh, people on paid social platforms can basically be, make a huge difference between how expensive it is for you to recruit a lead or not. So as Adam said, this activity 
activity was running in kind of the autumn. Um, we know that actually, if we kind of uh, looked at sort of spending on that same campaign uh, over maybe sort of the next six months, that actually we'd want to weight the budget, uh, yeah, very much more towards the kind of uh, sort of March to April period, um, and just generally that kind of like early in the year. So. We're keeping measuring that because, um, yeah, it can really help get the most value again out of those action pages just by spending a little bit more in different different months and accepting that you might have a little bit more of a kind of some spikes in when you're getting people into the organisation. So as well as this is just temperamental or am I using wrong verb? <laughs> as well as um, looking at optimizing uh, the kind of the paid social campaign and the landing page as well. Um, we also wanted to optimize the post action uh, asks. So um, yeah, I think many of you will have these on your pages, but essentially um, on any kind of action page, uh, we would always recommend that you have a secondary ask. Um, you can actually have more as well. We often daisy chain them, um, but you should have a, at least one instead of kind of instead of that thank you. Um, you can still thank people like we have done uh, here, uh, but yeah, kind of asking anybody who's signed something like a hand raiser or a petition, especially to immediately take another action. So we know that the data shows that essentially somebody will always do the thing that you're asking them to do, no matter if it is high bar. Um, and for sense, we started with uh, the first uh, secondary ask was a uh, share ask, which you can see on the left. Um, and then we had a regular giving ask, which, um, yeah, kind of some people might say, you know, is that going to work? We can be able to convert people when they've only just kind of uh, signed up to hear more from us. Um, but yeah, we kind of uh, tested having that as well. And uh, the results of that were it, it, the uh, number of donations was below benchmark for that. So what we did, <laughs> what we did was we optimized. So the first thing you can see on the left, uh, that underlined text there, which says for the price of the coffee each month, we introduced this wording onto the donation ask, which really relativized um, that, that donation, made it um, seem like um, you could just replace one coffee from your day and um, you, you get that money back. Um, we also lowered the lowest donation prompt. So uh, we lowered it from five pound a month to three pound a month. You can see that on the right hand side. And the other thing we did was we moved that donation ask to, um, the, uh, to before the share. So it was the first ask rather than the second secondary ask. That makes sense. Yeah, so um, those kind of small tweaks and optimizations um, brought the sense donate rate, so the number of people that were signing up for that regular gift um, kind of immediately after signing the hand raiser up to, yeah, just below 0.5%. So uh, sense is the bar on the right. And then we've got uh, another couple of uh, organizations from the health sector, again, um, who are running similar kind of recruitment and then immediate donate ask uh, campaigns as well. So um, yeah, we were pleased that with just those kind of small tweaks, um, as Adam said, they just kind of copy and sort of numbers on the buttons and things like that. And um, we were able to improve that and sort of answer that question I guess you started with of actually can you get regular givers um, in through the door straight away. Um, but we did want to uh, carry on improving that. Um, <laughs> Is it that one? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, this is me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so what we did was uh, we introduced this piece of wording that's highlighted. So it says, uh, on average, our supporters generously give £3.94. Could you match this or go even further? Um, and what we found was that that in, in, uh, increased the click through rate, it increased the volume of donations, uh, and it also uh, increased the average uh, amount given uh, on a, as a monthly gift. So that, that was really great. Yeah, again, just a really, really small uh, kind of copy change um, that really improved things. Um, but we wouldn't want to kind of stop there. So um, as you said, we kind of had those uh, little optimizations which really improved that, that donate rate and brought it well within kind of benchmarks. Um, but yeah, some kind of other sort of ideas of where we kind of might go next, things that have worked for other partners um, that we've uh, worked with and tested this on similar pages. Um, the one on the left there is basically asking for cash instead. Um, so where you have that kind of regular giving ask immediately after a hand raiser or a petition, um, obviously a lot of people will say, no, sorry, not right now. Um, we've yeah, kind of for some uh, partners looked at then having like that's no problem, but could you give a cash gift? Um, I think maybe there's a little bit of sort of slight guilt tripping at play there, um, but it, it does work and it means that yeah, kind of new leads are giving um, that first kind of crucial donation um, all within that initial action page uh, sort of journey basically. Um, and then the one on the right um, is just yeah, I guess sort of 
looking at playing into that that cost of living um, framing. Um, I know some people are finding like actually it's a little bit tired now, and you do need to sort of uh, I guess sort of breathe new life into it if you want to make a really compelling case for a donation. Um, but this one um, is just looking at whether you can ask people to double their donation or increase their donation, maybe with an upsell, um, basically on behalf of someone who's priced out by the cost of living crisis. So sort of um, being very direct and saying, yeah, people have aren't able to donate because of the cost of living crisis. If you're someone that can, could you give a bit more? Um, and yeah, that has uh, been an interesting test and uh, worked uh, for some partners on similar action pages. So, um, what would we uh, yeah, like you to take away from this? Um, I think firstly, obviously benchmark. Um, it is just a really, really great way uh, to measure your performance. Um, as I said, if you're looking at a good, good quality data, um, and if you've got particularly pages that you send a lot of traffic to, like donation pages or recruitment pages, um, yeah, you just wanna make sure that those pages are working um, as hard as possible. So you can come to forward action. Um, you can use resources like the m and then M and R benchmarks, um, which I'm sure lots of people kind of use and find very useful. Um, but yeah, just making sure that you're that you're measuring your impact and performance. Yeah, and for us as an organisation, this is something that, as I said, when we first started, it was really useful to have um, some benchmarks to ground ourselves um, in. But we do this at the start of every sort of major project now, as we look at uh, uh, looking to see if we can find any benchmarks to, so we know where we're aiming. Um, and I guess I, it can sometimes be hard to find that data. And what I would say is that it is possible just to reach out to uh, contacts that you know at other, other organizations. I would personally be happy to share sort of um, some sort of broad results um, if, if there's some similar activity. Um, so yeah, um, I, I just recommend um, yeah, doing it at the start of every project. All working together. All working together. <laughs> We're all nice people. Yeah, um, <laughs> definitely. Uh, the second thing um, that, yeah, hopefully um, you take away um, is just the importance of those secondary actions. So, um, yeah, you might have kind of page templates that sort of allow that um, immediately. I know a lot of the time the kind of the default is that share. Um, I think, yeah, uh, like the forward action sort of position would just be to always be kind of evaluating what the, the most valuable second action is for you. So share can be really, really great if you're, you know, trying to amplify the reach of a, a campaign um, or, yeah, you want kind of... Uh, extra sort of free leads from people who might go on to share those. Um, but actually, if income is really important to you, um, having the sort of a donation ask as the sort of default on those secondary actions um, can be, yeah, really, really impactful and just help you get the most out of every person who comes through uh, an action page of yours. <clears throat> um, yeah, and, and where, again, from an organizational perspective, um, where this is really useful, um, I found is tying disparate pieces of work together. Often we have so much activity going on at once um, that it can be hard to sort of prioritize actions. So tying sort of secondary asks into um, other activity can mean that you really um, sort of maximize the amount of uh, yeah, amount you get out of one one piece of activity. So one example is that we were running uh, a more traditional cam uh, campaign for change. Um, around uh, carers and un unpaid carers. Um, and we also had an appeal running at the same time around sort of uh, respite and holidays. Um, and so what we did was we tied the appeal ask into the thank you page and obviously that met, uh, went towards the um, appeal uh, yeah, fundraising target and it meant that we could achieve both uh, projects uh, goals in one. So um, yeah, I would definitely recommend always being creative with how you're tying actions together across um, yeah, the wide range of organizational activity. Great, and the final thing um, is, uh, yeah, looking at, at testing. So um, I think a lot of the time when we talk about kind of A-B testing, um, there is a bit of a, a s sort of fear of, oh my gosh, I need a, you know, an on-page testing strategy. I need all of this uh, sort of um, data on how we're doing right now. I we've got to spend kind of weeks preparing before we get the right test live. Um, and I think uh, really, hopefully, some of the examples we, we've shared today um, have shown kind of how easy uh, those those test ideas can be um, and almost kind of like obvious in a way, specifically with that uh, the price of a coffee example, like just looking at ways to make donating feel more accessible um, and like achievable to a supporter. Um, so yeah, I think um, don't let 
perfect be the enemy of the good? Nearly got the wrong way around. Um, but yeah, um, it doesn't need to be a big kind of on-page testing strategy. You can just have um, a you know, very, very quick kind of look at your pages, maybe with, with the team, um, point out some things that could be better, maybe look at, again, other pages uh, that kind of peers have running in the sector. Um, and yeah, make those A-B tests really, really kind of easy and simple. Um, better to have a, a test live than to be working on the perfect test and not actually utilizing that data that you've got coming through that traffic um, that basically will tell you this works better than this or don't do this, this doesn't work. <laughs> um, so yeah, A-B testing, definitely uh, a, a great use of time. Yeah, and I would, I would echo that. It's, uh, it can be a bit overwhelming. I have a million different things to do. It can be the last thing on my to-do list to set up a test. But what I would say is tools like Engaging Networks make it really easy. Um, to set up an A-B test, you can just, um, I think it's called the split test um, function. Um, you just duplicate a donation page, make the change to one of them, and then the traffic will be routed two ways, for example. Um, so yeah, I, I just try and set one up, um, keep a list of, of tests that I want to run. Um, and yeah, um, and, and then you've got data and learnings and you can just co constantly be evolving. Um, but it doesn't have to be this big thing, big fancy thing, um, as long as you've got um, something running at, at um, any one time. Um, it's good. And I think that's everything. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I think we might be a little bit ahead of time, so we're happy to do questions, but yeah, up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna, and uh, yeah, there, there's a, a few questions. Just a reminder that everyone can use Slido to ask any questions that you might have for uh, the presenters. So um, the first question is, how did you track the data in Engaging Networks? Did you use tracking links, origin source, or? Uh, we used the UTM. So um, yeah, when uh, uh, basically uh, it writes into the, the Engaging Networks spreadsheets. Um, and yeah, and then we, we sort of looked to that data, so we could. Map. I think we also had some Google Analytics tracking in as well, so um, we could match up the first-party data with the Google Analytics data and see um, how well we were tracking it. Um, and the next question is: Over what time period and number of of submissions did you test post-action asks? Do you have that? <laughs> Uh, the whole project was a pilot project and it lasted about three months um, and we were testing all the way through, um, I think. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, just to add to that on like timing, um, I think that's uh, definitely sometimes like a barrier that we find with, with testing um, is it's obviously you need to look at the amount of traffic you'll have running through um, the page during the time period. Um, on some pages, if you don't have a huge amount of kind of uh, traffic going to them, it's actually not a great idea to spend the time putting an A-B test on that page because you won't get statistical significance. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really good point just on, on timings is it was kind of a, a three month pilot, um, but we knew that we would be pushing traffic to the pages in that time. So we'd be able to get the data that we need. Um, so yeah, I don't need to have to do kind of complicated calculations on that, but just is it a page that gets a good uh, a good amount of traffic to it? It's a good kind of yeah thing to to check. All right, and I think we have time for one more question. Um, why did you focus on recurring donor asks in such an early stage of the campaign as opposed to one-off asks after some after someone signing up to a hand raiser? Yeah, you, you might think that's weird. Um, for us, as an organization, our pool of regular donors, um, <laughs> this is a really boring organizational answer, sorry. Um, yeah, our, our pool of regular donors was getting a bit static, so um, we decided to um, sort of kill two internal political stones, uh, birds with one stone, um, and yeah, and tested. We would definitely try, um, yeah, one-off uh, one donations next time um, and yeah and see if we can upgrade those um, so yeah not a perfect uh, scenario but um, <laughs> but yeah it was worth a try and um, yeah and we, we, we saw that it, it could work I, I think we do see that it does work as well for a lot of people um, especially if you're looking at 
if you're, if you're trying to recruit on paid social, if you have a regular giving ask, what you'll usually find is that um, you have a much better chance of making a return on your ad spend, mm. um, which is something that we look at often. So um, yeah, obviously there's like the organizational reasons for you know why you might want to prioritize regular regular givers. Um, but yeah, we often find that actually if you're if you're recruiting regular givers along with your acquisition activity, obviously depending on how long you can keep them on on, on your um, on your books, um, actually you'll you'll be able to make that that kind of uh, acquisition spend back much easily. Um, um, and it makes your kind of resource spent building the pages and doing all of that setup um, a little bit more worthwhile as well. So yeah, I think there's kind of like a general like investment uh, point there that again, you can look at the data that way and be like, no, this kind of works out and we're sort of making our, making our money back essentially. Great. Cool. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank Thanks you. everyone. <laughs>